Hello everybody, my name is Gary Crony. Thank you very much for stopping by my YouTube channel. It is February 1st, 2021, and it is the start of a brand new week and a brand new beautiful month. It is currently 1.13 in the morning Eastern time, so I'm very excited. You know, I can't even sleep right now. I have an open position over the weekend, so I'm very excited for market to open and pre-market hours to come up shortly. So there's a couple of things I actually want to talk about today, um, starting off with risk management. You know, my thoughts on before and after you take a position. This is more so important for new novice traders and people who struggle with, you know, discipline and risk management. Another thing I want to talk about is the short squeezes with stocks such as GameStop and AMC movie theaters, the hype going on with those stocks. And then I also wanted to talk about Melvin Capital, uh, the huge hedge fund that was responsible for um, one of GameStop's crazy pushes because of the short position they had and the major loss they took as a result. And I want to finish the video with the watch list for the week of February 1st. You know, a couple stocks I'm looking at traded, trading, a couple stocks I've had success with over the past uh, month, and I want to transition over to this month. So starting off with risk management. Risk management is very important because this is what will make or break your account. This is what will help you stay in the game longer per se. And this will help you, you know, minimize your losses and eventually start learning the game, learning the market and start, you know, becoming more of a profitable trader. So risk management starts when before you enter a position, you should understand where you want to take your profit and where you want to take your losses. And then you also want to set a max dollar loss that no matter what, I will not lose a dollar more um, than this amount. You know, you want to have that established before you take a trade because, you know, people are very emotional. And once they see, you know, they're up $500 and all of a sudden they're down $80, they start panicking. And as a result, they end up taking an $800 loss because they didn't want to take an $80 loss and stuff like that. And the same way with taking profits, because when you're up $500 and your target goal is $300 and you don't capitalize that on that gain, then it could pull right on back. And then now you're like, all right, I'm only up $200. So once it goes back up to three, I'll just take profit. And it might never hit $3. It might $300 profit, it might just keep pulling back. So you really have to understand risk management. Before I enter a position, I like to do the three to one ratio. I'm willing to risk 1% of my position size for a 3% um, chance of gain. So if I were to take a $10,000 position, I'm willing to risk $100 for a chance to make 300. Because if I lose two trades and I win one, I am still in the green overall. And obviously, you know, dynamics are involved with position size of each trade and stuff like that. But overall, you know, one to three percent of the um, you know, the account size is a good way to look at it. You never ever ever want to risk more than two percent of your account size, you know, because that is one rule you should follow. Because if your account is ten thousand dollars. You do not want to lose more than 200 bucks. You do not want to lose more than 2% on a given trade in a given day and stuff like that. Now that we got that out of the way, um, let's talk about the short squeezes and you know these two stocks, GME and AMC, GameStop and AMC Movie Theaters. So moving on over here, GME, you know, this is actually a crazy, crazy thing that's going on right now. You know. Um, th there was, uh, going back to the thing I'm going to add on with Melvin Capital here. So Melvin Capital is one hedge fund as well as other hedge funds that took a short position on GameStop, which basically they bet that the stock price was going to go down. They thought that their evaluation was extremely high, even when the stock was trading at $10 a share. And they've just been shown for two, for multiple years that their um, financial statements are, have just been decreasing and their revenue has been decreasing over the past couple of years. So there's no fundamental reason why this stock should even be near this price and this evaluation. Just the fact that retail traders got in a group chat 
and they were able to pump up the stock. It's very, very awesome. You know, I'm all for it. I'm a retail trader myself and I want other retail traders to win because obviously I realized that this is an actual profession and, but what's going on right now is I just feel like people are gambling. You know, some people are trying to be a part of the movement, but at the same time, you know, money is involved. So I'm very, very interested to see what's going to happen at GameStop. So basically going back to the short squeeze, you know, the Melvin Capital, the hedge fund that took a short position against it, basically they bet the stock was going to go down. So they took, they shorted the stock. So they sold the stock without owning it. The, bar, the Their broker lent them, you know, shares. And then basically to cover your position, you would just buy the stock back and then you would profit the spread. So if you shorted the stock at $30, and it went down to $20, then you would buy it back, then you just made a $10 gain. You know, however, when the stock goes up, you would lose money. So basically there was a 40%, um, a negative 40% um, short f flow, I believe it's called, on GameStop. As of right now, it's negative 122%. And what this means is that 122% of the shares available to the marketplace is currently being shorted. And this just means a lot, a lot, a lot of money is being involved. And it's because hedge funds, they ended up shorting the stock because usually when companies are overvalued like that, a short position is generally a safe position, even though there's more um, loss that you could take as opposed to profit because a stock could go up as high as it wants. You know, it's proven it here. However, it can only go down to zero. Anyway, um, so basically these Reddit users, they ended up pumping the stock up because they noticed that it was heavily shorted. And what happens is when you short the stock and it starts going up, even these hedge funds have to protect their capital. So they, in order to cut their losses, they have to buy back the stock. And when they buy that back the stock, it's going to make the price go up insurmountably. And this is exactly what happened. You know, GameStop went up freaking it was at one point it was up 16 it's about up 1600 percent in the past two weeks this is just the past six days it's up a thousand percent which is just ludicrous you know 10x in your money just like that but anyway um you know melvin capital took an insane insane loss they lost about 53 percent um, on the position that they took, you know, they started with about $12.5 billion in assets and ended this month with just over $8 billion after investors ended up, you know, putting more money into it. So this is very, very interesting. And this is currently going on with AMC right now as well. So if you look at AMC on Finviz, you can see that the short flow is about negative 44%, which basically this was what GMC was at when it was hyped up. And right now you see it went from four, consolidating around $4, spiking up to just under $26 pre-market and then pulling back. And as of Friday's trading day and consolidate, consolidated. So I obviously I got, I actually got into the position. I took a small um, position on this just to actually have some skin in the game and to be a part of history quote-unquote you know I'm up $22.50 and I got in a, just under $13 this year so I'm not really looking to make a lot of money as a, as well as not losing a lot of money I just kind of wanted to have some skin in the game you know for each dollar this stock goes up or down I make $50 and I'm only invested about you know less than one less than half a percent of my account size so i'm not worried about it just like that i just kind of wanted to be a part of it and then um you know moving on you know after there's there's been this bull run it's crazy to see how long it's actually been lasting you know usually stuff like this it doesn't last for a, a long time but this has just been going on and I'm very interested to see what's going to happen this week. So moving on, I want to finish off with my watch list for the week of February 1st. So let me just go back. 
Obviously, I'm in AMC right now. I'm probably going to swing it for the week. Unless it hits the $20 range, I might just take profit. You know, that would be around $350. That would be like a 50, over 50% 50 gain. So that that's pretty awesome. Anyway, I wanted to put up Nicola here. So Nicola has just been very bullish, especially with the Biden administration taking over. I remember looking at the past 180 days, zoom out, you know, the stock pulled all the way down to $13. You seen at $17 was a solid support. So once it um, started to recover and it broke above the EMA, it kind of looked, it uses the EMA as a support and it just recently pulled back. And I used to love trading Nicola. I love, love, love trading Nicola because of its price action. But after it went its separate ways with GM and the rumor to have the little partnership going on, it kind of just, you know, got destroyed. But I love trading Nicola, especially with price action. It it tends to when it stays when it opens above twenty dollars, it tends to shoot up. You know, I, I pay attention to stuff like that. But you know, with the Biden administration and and their whole pursuit to, you know, get more electric vehicles in their in their fleet, I think that could be a very bullish thing for all of these companies. You know, another thing I'm looking at is NNDM. This one was one my brother actually pitched me. Um, looking at the past 180 days, this has been nothing but bullish, bullish, bullish. 71 pennies back in around Mother's Day. That's just ludicrous. And now it's just over $13 and it's a steal right now, in my opinion. You know, this has been nothing but going up. It had earnings. It looks like it, it did well with their earnings. And it's just been bullish. It went all the way up. It pulled back. So right now, this could be another example of higher highs. It doesn't mean it's necessarily the time to buy. But it's definitely a good time to keep your eyes on it. I, I think anything under $15 is very attractive for this stock. But, you know, this is a nice company I like to trade because pre-market, you know, it just skyrocket at, at market open, it just pushes up. So it's very interesting to see what's going to happen this week with this. Going back, obviously, I'm in my AMC position. And then XL. XL is another one. This is another electric vehicle, um, electric uh, related stock. Um, recently, it just pulled back, as as did the whole market. But if you can see here, it looks like it found a support. You know, looking at let's go even further back, past 180 days. You know, when you see stuff like that where it's down, it spikes up and it pulls back. Right here is the consolidation stage. And you can see it has trouble breaking and staying above 22. And at the same time, it tends to not break down too low below $18, finds a support there. So consolidating, consolidating. And you can see this thing either spike up or pull right on back down. But it is currently below the SMA line. If it could break above the SMA line, this thing could you know, shoot up all the way to these highs, which is 15%. And potentially go all the way back to its previous highs, which would be about an 80, almost an 80% gain from breaking above the SMA line. That's almost a hundred percent gain from where it's at right now. So another that that's what I'm gonna be looking at. You know, I, I definitely enjoy trading Excel as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, I just wanted to have a video posted for this week and you know, stocks I'm gonna be looking at and stuff like that going back it just it's crazy that retail traders really are doing stuff like that like there was no fundamental reason for GameStop to go up that high it, the short position was a good position for um you know these head fund, hedge funds to take but it, it's very very crazy to really believe that retail traders are here to stay it, it's really cool to see that and you know, some people really, really hit, hit a lick, you know, made a killing. It's very nice to see that. And I just hope, you know, if you're, if you're getting ready to get into the market, please educate yourself. Please understand what's going on. You know, this market 
it, it, it's been bullish right now, but you know, it's, it really is the study of behavior because when stock, when people, when the stock starts going down, people start losing money and they start panic selling, it's all behavior. That's what drives the price down. So when you see the price of a stock go down, generally you shouldn't be too worried. It's more of a safe thing. Like when the stock just keeps going up, 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 that's when you should get a little scared because if you see a stock go up 200% in the past five days, you really think it's gonna go up some more, it's more likely to pull back. Um, you know, stocks go up, but they always come back down. And especially when people are just getting into the market, not aware, you have to really understand why you're getting into a position. And like a day trader, a prime example is if you see that this is a support right here, and you understand, all right, it pulls back, this looks like a support, I got in right here, and then I sold right here. This is what a day trader is. You know, they get in here, they get out here, you know, they wait, 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 sit patiently. This looks like a nice entry. They buy in and sell right here. And if you had a thousand shares, you would have made $560. And that's only about a $13,000 investment. But if, you know, if you rode the wave, you would have made $2,500, stuff like that. You know, so it's very good to understand what's going on why you're getting in and what price you're going to get out you know thank you very much guys i hope this i hope you learned something from this video you know if you could leave a comment below i just want to get more feedback you know other things to post on because i do want to take this a little bit more serious than i have been thank you very much guys have a good one and have a great week